How's it going guys? Today we're going to look at uh, the first big piece uh, that we need to learn about Dreamweaver. Uh, so far we've learned how to create or define a site and uh, open up and manipulate a new HTML file. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up a site that I've already made called Worksite. You'll have something similar already made. So as you can see in my files tab, I'm in my works site. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and create a new HTML document, which you already know how to do. And now we have a blank document to work from. Okay. What we're going to look at today is a couple things. We're going to look at what's called a CSS style, a CSS styles sheet. And essentially, here's what that is. It's a list or a sheet full of rules uh, for our website. Okay, here's what it's used for. Uh, if we want to go in and say we've got five or six different web pages on our website and we wanted to put a header on each page, we would not want to go through the hassle of having to make that header from scratch five or six times. Rather, we can use a CSS style sheet to create a rule for that header with all the properties that we want for that header already on it. So all we have to do is come into our web page, type in uh, some code with the word header in it, and it'll automatically create that header for us with all the properties that we've already got set up beforehand on our sheet. Okay, It's going to make more sense once we get into it and start creating it and making some rules. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. We'll jump over here into our CSS Designer tab. Now let me uh, tell you real quick, what is CSS? CSS is another type of language uh, used for creating websites or web pages, just like HTML. It's going to look a little bit different than HTML, uh, but that's pretty much all that you need to know at this point. I'm not going to spend too much time uh, explaining that. We're not going to go too in-depth in creating CSS code from hand or from scratch. Uh, so, here we go. We're in our CSS Designer tab. Yours will look just like this. Notice all this is grayed out. We're going to have to create our styles sheet, our CSS style sheet first, before we can even add anything to it, like a media or selectors or anything like that. So, we're going to click on this plus sign, Add CSS Source. It's going to be a new CSS file. And we're going to hit this Browse button and tell it exactly where to put this style sheet. Uh, so we're going to browse, make sure it's in your folder that you want it to be in. And we're going to call it styles.css. That's kind of the generic, uh, everyday used term uh, for naming your, your style sheet. Okay, so we're going to hit Save. And it will make that file and it will put it right there in our work folder. Hit OK. And as you can see over in our files panel, there it is. Okay. You'll also notice it created a link here in the top left where we can actually view our style sheet. And notice there's nothing here yet. But there will be. Okay. So now we're going to come down to selectors. What the selectors is, if we open it up, this is where our rules are going to go. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a rule for every piece of our web page. So your header, your footer, your body, uh, all that stuff that you guys used to make in Photoshop, we're going to make a rule for them and set up its own properties for how big we want it to be, uh, you know, if we want a border around it, if we want a color on it, you know, whatever that we want. We're going to make a rule for each of those pieces to use in our web page or in our website. So we're going to start making our first rule. We're going to hit the plus sign. And we're going to type hashtag container. Okay. Now this is also called a wrapper. And actually, I think I'm going to use the term wrapper here uh, because we're going to see it some more in some other tutorials that we use. But just know that it's interchangeable with the word container. And actually, we, you could call it anything you want to. But to keep everything in order and in line for our class, we'll call it all a wrapper. Uh, and we'll click off of that. And we just made a new rule called a wrapper. Okay, that's its name. Now this hashtag, we'll get into it a little bit later, but hashtag identifies this rule as an identifier or an ID. Okay, and that'll make sense later. 
We just know that. But we have no properties associated with this rule yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a property. We're going to tell it that every time that we type in that word wrapper, we want it to give it a width. Notice it gives me options for widths. I'm just going to use basic width. And we're going to give it a width of 1366 pixels. Okay. You don't have to type pixels. You can just leave it at 1366. It'll know what you're talking about. And we're going to give it a background color. The only reason I'm going to give it a background color right now is just so that we can actually see it when we create it. So we're not, you know, because if we don't put a color, it's just going to be white and it's not going to show up. Uh, so I'm going to give it a background color of kind of like a dark gray there. As you notice, as I'm doing this, it's actually adding it to my styles sheet over here. Okay. Now, real quick, I want to take a, I'm going to pop into Photoshop real fast and kind of explain exactly what we're doing with this wrapper and what it is. So I created this little diagram for us. Some of this looks very familiar to you. We have our header here, our nav bar, our body, and our footer. That should not be anything new. Now, the wrapper. The wrapper will be the outside container for our web page. Okay? It's what's going to hold everything inside. Okay? And it is 1366 pixels wide, meaning it's the entire width of our page. Okay? So if I pop this in pixels, you'll see 1366. It's simply there to contain or to hold all the other pieces together. That's it. That's all it does. That's its job. Okay? So, back in Dreamweaver. And like I said, we'll end up making all these other pieces. Header, navbar, body, footer. Those are all going to be different rules that we're going to make later on. But we're going to start with the wrapper because it goes first. Okay? So here we are, background color, gray, whatever. We've got this style over here. Uh, so anytime that I add hashtag wrapper, it's going to look for any kind of properties that I have here, and it's going to add them to my page automatically. So I don't have to type any of that code. It'll pop it in automatically using CSS. So I'm going to come back here to my source code, and I'm going to start typing the HTML code to insert that div. Uh, or that rule. So I'm going to start typing my tag. My tab will be a div or a division. It's going to be a div ID, and I'll explain that here in a second. And that div ID is going to be called our wrapper. As you can see, it, it pops up and tries to give me a list of possible rules to insert here. So I'll go ahead and add that wrapper. It'll close that off. And of course, we need to close this tag out there. Okay, so let's go through this tag one step at a time and see what we have here. What we start with is a div tag or division. What that means is, if we pop back here in our basic layout, essentially what we've done is we've divided this page up into sections. Header, navbar, body, footer, wrapper, so forth. They're all divisions of our page. So that should link with div, the div tag, division. Okay. Next, we have our ID, okay? So this is our property here. Uh, the wrapper rule is identified as an ID. And the reason why it's identified as an ID is because we added this hashtag. And um, that'll make more sense later as we start making more rules. Just know that if we have a hashtag before the rule, it's actually an ID. So we'll use the ID identifier here to identify this rule of wrapper. Okay. Now, under this wrapper, as you can see, it has a gray background and it is 1366 pixels wide, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay. So next, we're going to go on and we're going to create some new rules, some more rules. And these rules will create the basic layout for our page. So what we're going to do is, as you can see, I've already added a new rule called header for our header. And uh, I have to give this rule a width. So I'll come here to width. And let's take a look at our basic layout one more time. Now remember, our original resolution was 1366 when we were creating pages in Photoshop. 
but our container here, the width of it was actually 940 pixels, remember, so that we can make sure that everything showed on everybody's uh, screens the exact same, and they can see all of our content. We made the container here smaller than the actual width of the page, okay, so it was 940. So what we're going to do here, I want to do that. 